So there's two things that we're going to be covering today. Uh, first thing is creating a reusable symbol and then uh, adding it to a library. And then we're also going to be covering embedding a .NET control into your VGOXL project. So uh, we're going to start with uh, number one, creating a reusable symbol and library. So I'm going to begin by creating a brand new project. So I'm going to go to new. In this particular project, I'm going to call it uh, uh, symbols and .NET control. I'm going to use a 1500 tag license, which is the lowest license that we offer with VGXL. Hit OK. I'm going to use the default resolution of my laptop, which was a 1080p. Here we go. Now we have a blank app. I'm going to create a new screen. And now we have a blank canvas to start on. So the first thing I want to point out with symbols is that uh, this, there's many, many sim system symbols that are built into VGXL. So if I go into the symbol library here, I can actually see I have a whole list of different types of symbols, and they're divided into different categories. What I'm looking for right now is uh, with my application, I'd like to be able to exit any time I, I am running instead of having to do uh, fancy maneuvers like Alt F4 or tabbing back to the main development and stopping it. So I'm going to use a button which is already created for me, which is an exit button. So this exit button, I can click on it, go over here back to the screen, click again, and there is a button. It's a symbol that has been made for us, which when you touch it will pop up a dialogue to say, uh, do you want to exit? Yes, and then it will. Let's just test it. So if I save this particular window, I've got a brand new screen, so we'll hit save. And I'll make this my uh, default startup screen. I'll start my project. Now I have a blank screen, but if I hit the exit button, sure enough, are you sure you want to exit the application? Yes. And it takes me back to the development. It has stopped the runtime for me. And I'm really ready to proceed on. So the next thing I want to show you is uh, some other symbols we do have in here. So for example, let's say you want to play around with uh, changing the level of a tank using a slider. So we have a bunch of slider components. The one I'm going to pick on today is the slider 01. Grab that guy, click. And then the other thing I'm going to go grab from the symbol library is a tank. So under tanks, of course. Uh, the tank I'm going to use for today is tank 23. So now I have two symbols on the screen. One is uh, uh, a slider component. The other one is a tank with actual level that goes up and down. So the nice thing about these symbols, they're not just graphic objects and then you have to do all the work afterwards. With symbols, you have actual uh, uh, tags and capabilities, properties that you can change of these symbols. So if I look at this slider, for example, I have a max 100, min 0, and a tag name. The tag name is referring to the value that will be here as well as what's changed when you actuate the slider. If I look at the tank, you can see there's also a tag. In this case, it's called tag level, and that'll control the level of the tank. And of course, I have a min 0 and a max 100. So it doesn't always have to be a number in here. You can actually put a tag name in there or a hard value. So in this case, I'm going to change the tank level. I'm going to change that to a different tag. So the one I'm going to use, I'm going to create a new tag called uh, my integer. Whoops. If I can spell it correctly, my underscore integer. OK, so now under integer, I have my integer. Choose him. He is now in for the tank. And now if I click on to this guy, I'm going to put the exact same tag in this one. I'm going to go ahead and use the 0 to 100 as the default. So if I save my screen, start my application, I can actually drag this bar up and I see the value go up and I can see the value go down. So now that I've created a, <clears throat> a couple of symbols, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Obviously, if I want to create more than one slider, more than one tank, I can do so. So for example, I can do a con control C after selecting this guy, control V to paste it. And I have this uh, guy right there. Now these two, you would think are identical. And in fact, they are. So I can see he is set up for my integer and he is also set up for my integer. 
Now these are actually the same though, uh, link symbol, only thing we're going to be changing is the property and the associated value that goes with it. So I could choose a different tag name for this one here, perhaps one of my system tags. So for example, I could choose uh, even an analog value that's in here. So I can put something different in here. Now these two parts, although they were copied and pasted the same, they're just giving different references to the object. But the code that's running behind the symbol itself is identical between the two. So let's prove that. You can actually edit the symbol once it's on the screen. So I can right click on it, edit the link symbol. And let's say with this particular symbol, I wanna make it a little bit bigger and I wanna put some text on it. So I can ungroup him. Grab this, extend it out. Now I've got a little more space to play around with. And I could go grab a uh, text component, put it on here, and put something like uh, my text on here. So now I've got some, uh, some change I've made to it. All I have to do is hit close. And actually, it's giving me a little warning that obviously if I'm using these screens, it needs to be updated. And we see both have been updated at exactly the same time. But in this case, I've got the same title or reference that I'm putting on here for text on both. Right now, this isn't dynamic. So the only way I'm gonna be able to have these guys run completely independently, maybe I want a different title on this one versus that one. Uh, maybe this is gonna to refer to, uh, uh, one's referring to perhaps level or pressure, and I wanna have them different. So in that case, I can unlink the symbol. So these are linked right now. I can unlink them. And now I actually have, this guy has become no longer even a symbol because I no longer have this edit link symbol option. So what I can do, however, is create a link symbol back again, but now I have to save it somewhere because it's no longer gonna be one of our system generated symbols. So I'm gonna create a new folder called uh, my custom symbols. And within that folder, I'll put this symbol here, my first symbol. Save him. So now, actually, if I go back to my symbol list, <clears throat> you actually see at the top here, I would have expected it to be under project symbols, but it's not showing up. So I'll close this, open my symbols back up again. And now under project symbols, I now see my symbol in here. So there's the symbol I just created. So now this guy is independent from him. So if I go in and play with his text, so let's say I just want to move his text or I want to change the actual text on it, whichever change I want to make, bring back my screen and we can see these two are no longer linked together. However, if I want to keep making more of these, this new one, I can either do control C and paste it, or of course I can go back to my symbol list, click on it here and create another instance of it. And these two are linked. So I'll stick them up on the top left. And we can see these two are in fact linked. So that's just a quick demonstration of how to play with, say, an existing symbol that's there, modify the existing symbol just a little bit, create your own link symbol. But what if we wanted to recreate this symbol from scratch? And the reason why I want to bring up that is when you go in here, you see that you've got this max, min, tag name property. How do you create your own properties? And uh, that's, that would be very powerful if you've created something uh, that you spend a lot of time on and you want to make sure that uh, you're getting the most flexibility possible, you need to be able to create your own properties. So let's try and do that. So I'm going to uh, get rid of some of these things I was just playing with. And let's say we want to recreate uh, something that looks sort of like the, uh, the original uh, symbol that we had in here. So if I actually go back to the uh, I'm going to delete this particular guy. I want to get back to in uh, the symbol library sliders slider one. Yep, because I've changed that original symbol. Now I'm back to the original one there. I want to duplicate what I did in here, but I want to do it all from scratch. 
So how would I do that? So just to reiterate what this is doing, I can change the value back again. So now I want to build this completely from scratch. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a rectangle. Grab a rectangle from here. Draw it on. Now obviously you can spend quite a bit of time making it look the way you'd like. In my particular case, I'm just going to get uh, kind of close as far as the, uh, the look goes. Maybe I'll use a black surround for mine. Get something sort of the same size. <clears throat> so next I'm going to need a second rectangle. This rectangle is going to be for where my slider is going to sit. Again, for this one, I'll choose something a little bit darker. And again, I can surround it with black. So now I'm getting something that's sort of looking like this particular part. Next, I need to actually have a little slider part that goes up and down. So I'll get a third rectangle, draw it over here. And I'm going to make it so that's roughly the center of this square is at the bottom of this. I'm going to use my something like that. Oops. You get the idea. So something like that. So now I've got something that goes over <clears throat> over the top of him. But right now, nothing is dynamic. Everything's static images I'm creating. So what I could do is I'll create a, a symbol out of this. Put it into my custom symbols. And I'll call this my first slider symbol. So notice as I'm creating this, this symbol is associated with my project that I'm working on. So if you uh, are obviously familiar with uh, VGXL, you'll know that uh, this is all con contained in one single folder on your hard drive or PC that you're running. Uh, so <clears throat> this will be in the folder in the symbols, project symbols folder and being contained in there. Again, it's not showing up because we haven't refreshed the library. Just close it and open it again. Whoa. Now we can see that my first slider symbol is in there as well. So <clears throat> now we need to get this guy to actually do something. So we're going to right click on him, edit link symbol. This should look familiar. You've done this before with the pre-made system ones. So now I'm going to make it so that this little guy will go up and down. So for him, I don't have a pre-made property. I'm going to have to add a position animation to that object. So now when I go into the properties window, I can see that I've been added a visibility and position option. What we want to play with is a tag expression and these value ranges. So what I like to do when I'm doing something like a slider, and it's why I centered this little square on the bottom of the uh, this rectangle, is when I look at this particular rectangle, I can actually see in the bottom right hand corner here, it says that the height is 111 for that box. So that means when I go into this guy, into his visibility uh, and position, I want to set this to 111 for the position I want this slider to go up. I'll then have a value range, either set by the user, or in this case it's uh, fixed, then uh, it'll interpolate between the 0 and 111 using the 0 to 100 or whatever values you have on the top here. So now we need a user to be actually to be able to, uh, you know, assign a value to where that slider is going to be in the position. And in fact, we eventually want him to be able to drag it into position. So what we need to do is uh, create an internal tag just for the purpose of the symbol so that we can assign something to it later on. So we do that by putting a pound sign in the front. And in this case, I may just want to call it value. I then put a colon afterwards, and that signifies that this is actually something that the user can enter. I can then do the same thing for the min, colon, and in this case, I'm going to put a default value of zero. So anything after the colon is a default value. I'm going to do the same thing for the, uh, for the maximum, pound max, colon, 100. So in this case, without the, uh, the user, whoever's using my symbol, Without them having to type in these values, I'm going to put in a 0 and a 100, respectively. However, I'm not going to put in a default value. You're going to have to assign a tag, and that will obviously represent the value that's going to go in there. 
The final thing we need to do is turn this into a part that I can actually slide up and down. So VGUXL is ready to go for gestures. So all we have to do is check the checkbox for enable and VGUXL looks after the rest. There's no other code you have to do to do sliding and, and swiping kind of things. You just check these uh, gesture boxes. So let's try this out. So I'm gonna save this. Go back to the screen. <clears throat> we can see there's our part ready to go. I'm gonna save my screen and start. So we can see here with this uh, particular part, everything is there, but we've forgotten one thing that we need to do on this particular part. I can't do anything with it till I assign a tag to it. A little loops there, but that's okay. So here we go, there's the 100 and the zero that I put in there. And now we're looking for the tag. We can reuse my integer. Try it again. So we've got a problem here. So we said we wanted to go from 0 to 111, but it's going the wrong way. That's OK. I sometimes make this mistake too. It's actually I need it to go negative on the vertical. So I actually set it to go positive. Everything in this case is measured from the top left-hand corner of the screen. This is actually 0, 0, and then going down the screen. So this is plus and plus. So in this case, I actually need it to start here and go minus 111. That's okay. Let's go back into the part, edit the link symbol. So instead of plus 111, I need it to go minus 111. So now, oh my, it's working now. So now we've got a, a slider that I can grab from here or the original slider and it's working. Only thing left to do is to do, uh, I mean, we're not gonna do all the graphics that are in here. Nobody has time to like play around with that. So I'm going to just add another uh, piece of text. So you can actually see the value going at the same time. So here we have the, uh, we're back in the symbol. We're gonna add a piece of text, pound, 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 percent sign. So the pound signs, are representing something dynamic, something that's going to be set by the actual tag uh, that you're going to assign to this. And then the percent sign and the space that's in between is static. So it will dynamically replace the pound signs in runtime. <clears throat> that's assuming, of course, we turn on the text data link. So in our case, we're going to use the same one that we used over here. Now, obviously, uh, uh, it's important to get the name right. Unfortunately, there's no browser to reference in this case, you need to make sure that you're typing things in correctly. So I'm gonna cheat by copying and pasting it in there so I don't make a mistake. Save my symbol. See it's updated here. Saved, start it again. So now we actually see a value much like this slider and we've created our own unique part. Now obviously we can see we have some little uh, intricacy details here, like maybe I should make the box a little bigger or make the slider a little bit smaller. But you get the idea of uh, that we've created a part from scratch. And now it's a reusable part. Remember, this is a part that's available in our library to be used at any time. So anytime I want to go into my symbols here, it's not in the system symbols. It's always in my project symbols for something custom that you have made. So in this case, I could go and grab, of course, my first slider symbol and drop it on the screen anytime I like. And now I have something that's reusable, shareable, postable, so you can uh, share with other people uh, your VGXL uh, uh, symbol that you've created, or of course, you know, you're working on a project, uh, you can keep it uh, a little bit more proprietary to what you wanna do. But keep in mind, it is located in the, uh, the file folder within uh, your project. So next, we're going to work on uh, .NET controls. .NET controls uh, are uh, 
let's just say they're, they're an object that you can drop on the screen fully integrated into the VGOXL environment. The uh, beautiful thing is there's lots of .NET controls already out there on the market. Uh, many are built into Windows. In this case, I'm using Windows 10 today. Uh, but of course, you can create your own uh, .NET uh, components, bring them into VGOXL. So this is where if you've written some code uh, for an application, uh, maybe it was uh, custom written in C Sharp or Visual Basic, all you have to do is uh, wrap that code in a, a .NET control, and VGOXL can bring that in. There are some restrictions as to uh, the version of uh, .NET that you can use. So as of uh, today, we're in uh, September uh, 2018, uh, we are restricted to uh, .NET components that are version 3.5 or earlier. Uh, hopefully that will change in the, in the future, but that is uh, one restriction on the .NET controls. So uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you uh, bringing in a web browser. I'm going to embed a web page uh, browser into the actual environment here and I'm going to use a button to uh, to tell it to go to a particular web page so to make this happen though uh, I don't have to change anything we still have all these components here we can reuse the same screen too we've been using all along I'm going to go into the graphic uh, portion of the toolbar and grab a dotnet control now what it's doing right now is checking on my system for any uh, already installed .NET controls, and specifically those that are in the Global Assembly Cache, GAC. So obviously if it's a registered component on your computer, uh, there's a high probability it will show up in this list. If you have a control that uh, you haven't built an installation utility for, um, yet uh, is capable of running on your system, you've got all the stuff you need to, uh, to run that control on your uh, operating system, you can browse to the specific control that you're looking for. So you're looking for a particular DLL file, let's say. So um, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a, the built-in web browser, which is down here in the bottom of the list. I'm going to hit OK. And you're going to see, uh, depending on the component, some build time uh, 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 displays will show the actual .NET uh, component. There may be some view. In this case, it's just a white window that we're getting for this particular browser component. So um, what we care about in this browser component is the, uh, the property pages and the members. So property pages are things that uh, you may or may not be able to set in design time. And uh, these are basically static components. So you can set true or false on certain items, uh, certain things you wanted to have come up by default, the size, the margin, so on and so forth. However, what we typically want to play with when we're dealing with VGOXL is the members portion, which gives you a lot more properties you can play with, as well as whether you're doing getting and setting and are you reading that back into a tag. And then of course there's methods as well. And then finally events. So if you're familiar with the uh, let's just say .NET programming in general, you'll obviously have an appreciation for what properties, methods, and events are. I'm not going to go into all of those uh, today as far as the definitions. What we do care about for today is we're going to play with the URL property, which uh, is right near the bottom here. Here it is. So this URL represents the the, uh, the web page that we want to show. So I want to put a tag in here so that I will read back one, what is the current web page, as well as if I change the value of this string component, I can set the web page to whatever web page I'd like it set to. So I can go in here into the little dot, dot, dot button, and I'm gonna hit uh, new. I'm gonna create a string tag, and I'm gonna call it uh, Earl, just for simplicity. I'm gonna choose him. There we go. So now we have URL as the tag expression, and it's going to, uh, when I write a value in there, put it into the .NET component for me. So now I've gone from having a, a web page that displays nothing to displaying whatever I put into that tag. So if I make this window a little bit bigger, just so we can have a bit of a nice larger browser. Notice as well, now that I've set the URL, I actually get the little uh, scroll bar. So now it's actually realizing that I'm going to be passing it a web page at some point. I'm going to grab a button, and maybe I'll use this particular button to set a web page. So uh, I'm going to set a command. And when I touch this particular button, I want to set the URL. So that's my 
uh, string tag that I set, and I'm going to set it to HTTP colon slash www.google.ca. And of course I can change the text on this if I'd like. Google. Save this. And I'm going to start it. So now I have nothing, which is what I would typically expect. It's actually there, but it's actually in the same color as the background, so I'm not seeing it. I'm going to hit Google. And there we go. So now we have a Google page coming up. And this is the same size as I defined it in the environment. Of course, there's properties and such. I can change the size of this window on the fly, but uh, uh, I can even control whether there's scroll bars or not. So think of it, uh, if I need to view a PDF file, I need to view a web page, I need to view some help documentation, I need to view something, I can use this as an option to, uh, to bring in something that maybe VideoXL can't do. So for example, let's say I've got a, um, I've got a, a vision system and I want that vision system actually has a .NET component that allows me to be able to view the camera as well as change properties of the camera or view things are coming back from the camera, good, bad, pass, fail. I can embed that right into my environment so that it's, for the most part, seamless to the environment as far as the users feeling it. And that's as simple as it gets for .NET components. Obviously, it's a little more complicated to build your own .NET component, and perhaps I'll uh, make a video in the future on how to do that, but there are many videos online how to make a .NET component, and one of those DLL files that you can reuse. But in the meantime, there's lots of parts on the market, and of course, you, have, you can take advantage of your Windows environment as well.